Welcome to Petra Lounge. Presenting the 1966 Batmobile. I am super excited about this car. I am really happy to be able to present this to you today. It is a legitimate, real 1966 Batmobile. It was featured in the television show, and we're so fortunate that the owner of this car has said, yes, absolutely, you can shoot a video with my car. And it is just amazing. You're really gonna see some crazy stuff in this car. The original Batmobile was based off the 1966 Lincoln Futura show car. And George Barris got that from Ford after it went through the show car circuit. And when he was tasked with making the Batmobile, he thought that car would make a really fantastic Batmobile, which it did. He took that car, he modified it, he made it the iconic Batmobile that we know today. And after the show took off, he, uh, he got all these requests for the Batmobile to be here, to be there, to do this special event and that special event. And the showrunners realized, hey, we have to have multiple cars. So they commissioned three more copies of the Batmobile. This is number four. And each one had a specific purpose. Two and three were meant to go to car shows and be displayed and be this up close kind of uh, Batmobile that people would come up and interact with. This was the drag car, which it was assembled and purpose built to be a drag race automobile. It went to drag strips. And in the 60s, it turned uh, basically 12 second quarter miles. But uh, Bill Strewsbury, who was the hired driver for the car, he liked to spin the tires all the way down the drag strip. So more than likely, this car was capable of probably 10 second quarter miles. Really amazing uh, drivetrain in this car. So we're going to go ahead and open this hood up and just start showing that off to you. The original Batmobile actually has an opening hood and you can see the cut lines on the hood here. We'll go over that in a little bit when we talk about more of the body styling. But this particular car to get to the engine and everything, because this is just a big fiberglass shell, it just completely lifts up off the body. The chassis for this car was a uh, Ford Galaxy 500. It's been lengthened to match the original wheelbase of the Batmobile. And then inside here, you're gonna find a Holman Moody 427 double side oiler engine. Now, Holman Moody, if you don't know the name, they built competition engines for Ford in the 1960s. And this was a fully blueprinted block. Like I said, this was intended to go drag racing. It was meant to be a fast car and it was. It feeds into a uh, heavy duty C6 Ford transmission and then a nine bolt uh, positive traction rear end. It is really stout, it's really well built, and it is really, really fast. It's, uh, I, I wanna say it's a blast to drive, but actually the car is a little bit difficult to drive. We'll also get into that. Um, but you, know, you start to see just, I, I like to tell people to think of this car as a, it's a movie television prop car. So it wasn't really built to be driven, or at least not driven very far, it was really built to be seen and to just drive from place to place you know, and literally maybe a quarter mile at a time. And as we go over the exterior styling of this car, we'll start to see just how it really is a prop car and not really like a true road car. So as we were talking about the exterior of this car and everything else that kind of goes along with it, this is a it is a prop car. I mean, it's it, it's a custom built thing for a television show meant to look like the Batmobile, much more so than actually operate like a Batmobile would actually operate. And you see that everywhere on the car. And it even goes into this paint color. The paint scheme was chosen specifically for television. You're, you're looking at, this is a gloss black, but initially they painted the car in flat matte black. And they found that that didn't show up on the television camera. So they came back and they painted it gloss black. And that still didn't show up. So everywhere where you see red right now, they came back and they painted that with white. So it was originally black and white. And they still couldn't get the definitions of the lines of the car and all the little character points like around the front. So they came back and they used this special red paint that is actually a little bit fluorescent. Um, it's a day glow red. 
And on the television cameras of the time, it actually picked up even brighter than the white did. So that is why it has this iconic black and red paint scheme. But you start looking around the car and you'll even see there's some cut lines here that it looks like there should be a hood here that opens up. And on the original car, on the number one Batmobile the, and the Lincoln Futura, this was a hood. This did lift up and you could get to the engine this way. But because this was just a fiberglass mold of the original car, the cut lines are still there, but it doesn't have a functioning hood. It also does not have a functioning trunk, which we'll see in a little bit. Um, this, uh, this car was restored in 2015. At one point, George Barris had even painted this car with this strange, what he called bat fuzz, which was a uh, kind of like a suede finish. He electrostatically charged the car and then blew this kind of flocked material on top of it. And I, the only excuse I have is it was the 60s, and I guess that was cool. <laughs> but it stayed with the car a long time. And then at some point, somebody even filled in these, uh, these cut lines that I talked about. They were... They were filled in. They had to be put back in when the car was restored in 2015. Another interesting thing about the restoration, if you follow me over here to the wheels, these wheels have a really interesting story behind them. Um, these are the original style wheels that were on the Batmobile, and they're made by Red Deer, and they are a custom wheel maker. These are a little bigger than the uh, the original Batmobile, and that's mainly because this was designed as a drag car. These are 15 inch wheels, which were huge for the 1960s. And by the time this car had come up for restoration, the original wheels were long gone. They had some, you know, basically American racing style slotted wheels on there, but they didn't really match the car as it was when it was original in 1966. And that's what the owner wanted. So he called up Redeer. They, they make a wheel very similar to this. It's called a tri-rib. This is a single rib. You can see the single rib here. And the tri-rib has two additional ribs, one here and one over here. Um, they won't sell you these wheels anymore. They technically don't make them anymore. But he called the company up and he said, hey, you know, I, I would like a set of these wheels. Do you have any old stock? Do you know anybody that has any? No, we don't have any. Can you make a set? No, we really can't make a set. And this conversation went on for a little bit, and they finally said, well, what are you wanting to put these wheels on? And the owner says, well, I, I have number four Bat, uh, Batmobile. That's what I want these wheels for. So Radier said, you know what? Give us a week. We'll give you a call. We'll have your wheels for you. And so they made a special set of wheels just for this car. You cannot buy these. You cannot get these. But they were special made just for for Batmobile number four, really wonderful. Uh, one deviation from the uh, from the number one Batmobile. These are, are concave uh, little bat logos here. They are not concave on the original number one car that you see in the television show. Uh, all this logo stuff down here that you see, um, this was on the car in 1966. Uh, it just basically showed the provenance of the car, verified that it had been built by George Barris. It was a Batmobile, and you can just see, you know, it's powered by Ford, and all these other little tiny details that people wanted to know. Something everyone is just kind of taken aback by by this car is when you're in its presence, it's just so insanely long. It just seems to keep going and going. It's got this long hood. It only holds two people, and then this rear end section is just huge it goes on forever and ever and ever and then finally you get back here to the back and there's a lot going on back here and a lot of things that are very specific just to batmobile number four if you look at the rear canopy there are four speed holes on each side again because this car was meant to be a drag car they had problems with the the rear uh whatever you want to call it rear plexiglass windshield coming off so they had to put the speed holes in the rear so that Basically, you could drive this thing down the drag strip at 120, 130 miles an hour and not lose the rear canopy entirely. The, the three pipes that you see back here, everyone always thinks that's the exhaust. I thought it was the exhaust when I first saw it. Uh, in the television show, it's actually rocket tubes. And they don't connect to anything. They're just dummy tubes. They go nowhere. They do nothing. But they sure do look cool. You're going to see again 
The original Batmobile has a trunk back here. This piece did open up and you'll see the cut lines here again. And those were filled at one time. They were put back during the 2015 restoration. And you know, it's uh, something else you don't see or you don't notice until you're here. It's just how indented this rear bumper is. It's really a V shape and it's extreme. It's really, I don't want to say it's a 90 degree angle here, but you know, you're talking about an angle like this. It's not just, you know, your normal kind of, you know, the bumper comes in a little bit. It's big. Now the flamethrower back here does take away from that a little bit. And it is a very iconic part of the Batmobile. Uh, and this one on this car does actually work. The one on number one and on number four, they are working. There is a propane canister kind of about here underneath the car. And it's, it basically works the same way that your barbecue grill does. You have a, a little gas jet back here and it fires off and you, you have a little electronic igniter and you have flames. This also has a working parachute system. When we go inside, you'll see the bat turn lever, and that actually does control the parachutes. If you pull that lever, these parachutes will pop out, and they are functional. They do work. Again, this is a drag car. The, the scalloped edges here are just really fantastic little touches. I, I don't even know that I noticed them in the television show, but up close and personal, it's something you, you just really notice it. It's really dramatic. It's really you know distinctive. And it's a lot of work. I, I know this one is fiberglass, but the original Batmobile was all steel. And I'm, I'm shocked that they were able to get this done. And it just really looks incredible. Now, as we're walking around this car, you will start to notice, again, this is a, a prop car. So some things were not as well thought out as others. And you pull up in this car at the gas station, and you're thinking, oh, I'm going to fill the car up. And you start looking. And you look around the car. You walk around. Where is the fuel tank? We didn't see it under the hood. There's no fuel door back here. There's nothing in the rear of the car. So how do I fill this car up? And what you have to do here is you actually have to open the door and there's no exterior door handle. So you're gonna have to reach into the car and open the door. And you're struck by this whole door is just a fiberglass recreation of the original Lincoln Futura door that had been modified to, to be the Batmobile. Even the interior panel is just a, a recast mold of that Futura door. And it's just really light and a little bit flimsy. Uh, and, and it doesn't want to open all that well. And it's your ingress is just not so great. But once you're here, you'll start snapping these little snaps here. And the owner has conveniently given us this little tube here which actually goes back behind here. There's a fuel tank here with a gas cap and you unscrew the cap, you put the tube in and then you're gonna fill the car just like this. So it's a little bit ridiculous. It's very much an afterthought and it's just more of that homage of this is a show car. It really isn't thought about, you know, how am I gonna use the car? How am I going to drive this car? It's really just, hey, it needs to look good on television. So now that we're here with the door open, let's just go ahead and move inside the car. And as you sit down in the car, one thing I can tell you is this is a very uncomfortable car. The seating position is very strange and the, the seat cushion is very thin. Uh, it's not the kind of car you're gonna wanna drive 15, 20 miles, maybe not even 10 miles. It's, I, don't get me wrong, this is a cool car to be in. It is really cool to go and show somebody or show up in this car, but you're not going to drive 300 miles to Houston in this car. It's just not going to happen. Um, and, and then you start looking around. You're, I, I can't even see the front right corner because of this big, huge arch thing that's in the car. And no matter how I turn, I really can't see the back corner uh, over there on the passenger side. So pretty much the whole passenger side of the car is invisible to me sitting in the driver's seat. Even what I can see when I turn, it's it, these bubbled canopy windows, they distort everything that you're looking at. So if you don't have a passenger, this is actually a kind of unsafe car to drive, very difficult to drive. 
Anytime we move it inside this building, we always have a spotter with the car just because we can't tell exactly where it fits and we do this all the time. The interior of this car is not exactly 100% like the television car, the number one car. Now, this car did feature in one episode of the show. In season two, there's an episode, I believe it's episode 35, called The Contaminated Cowl. The number one car had been damaged. This car just happened to be sitting on the back lot. So they pulled this car in and shot a lot of the scenes in that episode with this very car. Obviously they didn't use the interior because the interior didn't really match. It wasn't as finished out, but this was restored to the way that number four looked in 1966. Uh, just kind of going through things. A lot of the stuff you see is not really functional. It does light up. You do, uh, you know, you can see it work, but it doesn't work in the sense that, you know, whatever the television show showed you that it does, it doesn't actually do. Everything that's functional is limited to this section here that says bat hands off. And I'll go over those controls in a minute. One thing you will notice is these labels are really big and kind of obnoxious. They're bright orange with black. Um, and, and when I first saw them, I was kind of like, why would you do this? Why, why have these labels? They don't look all that great. And you know, what was the point? Well, the point was when this car was on television, you wanted to be able to see what all these little things do. Like, you know, Batman's driving the car. What does this handle do? Oh, it's the emergency bat turn lever. And that way the television audience would know. And the only way you can get that to show up on TV in 1966 is to make it this big and this bright and this obnoxious. And this is how the actual car really was. Looking at the functional stuff here, now the speedometer up here, it comes out of a 1958 Edsel, and it does work, it is functional. It looks weird, very space agey, uh, very fitting to the Batmobile. I originally didn't think it worked at all. I thought it was a prop thing, but no, it was actually in a production car. And, and we start looking here at the, the Bat hands off section. So everything here has a, a specific function this is your uh, your blinkers, so left turn, right turn. Yeah, it's not even on the steering wheel. It's just a little tiny switch that you flip. This is the switch that actually raises and lowers the hood. This switch over here controls all the lights in the car. Um, if I turn the ignition on, this is the normal ignition switch and the key. Uh, it will light everything up. Unfortunately, if I turn it on right now, the the uh, fuel pump is really, really loud. It's going to interrupt the filming a little bit. So we will show you that, but I'm going to do that in just a second. These controls here, this actually controls the flamethrower. And I mean, it's a really significant, cool part of the car. So what you do is you, you flip this up, you flip the switch here, and then this is your igniter. So once this is flipped, you actually have gas flowing out of the back of the car. You hit this, that's your igniter. It ignites the flame and it runs until you push this down and the flame is off. Police lights and flashing everything. Lights up a bunch of stuff in Robin's section of the car over here, it's kind of neat. Uh, the Ford safety package here doesn't actually work, but it looks like it was a factory piece from maybe a Lincoln or you know, Ford automobile that has like your power door locks and apparently a couple of lights for like door jar and a few other things. The detectoscope, lights up just like you see it i don't know if it flashed at one time currently it does not it just stays lit up this way um, your bat ray projector is just a prop same with the anti-theft control um, the start button is not really a start button even though you can push it you do use the key to start the car the bat ram uh, it is literally just this bushing that's kind of stuck on a a piece of metal tubing and it does not move it doesn't push in it doesn't pull out uh, it is completely non-functional. The emergency bat turn lever is actually functional. If you pull this, you will pop the chutes on the back. I am not going to pull it because I don't want to repack the chutes, but yes, it does activate those. Um, pretty, you know, standard instrumentation, the stuff you need, you need your RPMs, uh, you need to know, you know, fuel pressure and oil pressure. You've got your standard, you know, automatic transmission shifter here, um, a prop Batmobile phone from the toy section of, I guess, you know, Toys R Us or whatever the equivalent was in 1966. 
And uh, let's just go ahead and move on to uh, Robin's side of the car. You may notice back here, uh, it's actually signed by Burt Ward, and you may have noticed Julie Newmar's signature on the other side. This car was at the funeral for Adam West, and while it was there, those actors were also there, and the owner of the car got them to sign the car and sit in the car and take some publicity photos. So, you know, just an extra little neat piece of history for this automobile. And looking here, uh, again, everything over here is pretty much, or uh, with the exception of one or two things, really non-functional. This uh, bad eye TV screen in the show, they would have a little projector that would show stuff on the back side of it. It doesn't do anything in this car. The closed circuit camera doesn't. The radar scope just lights up and makes pretty pictures. The rocket tubes, it's really just a, you can see it says heat. It was originally a, a heat switch for another automobile. Uh, the, the secret area is kind of funny. You label your secret area and it's really not so secret anymore <laughs> and and it doesn't really seem to have anything there's nothing under here there's not like there's a secret pocket or anything you could do i don't actually know what the secret area is it's just labeled secret area uh, this is just an old eight track tape player <laughs> I, I don't know why it's in here i i guess they used it to play the batman theme song it's got little speakers built in so it can actually play through that because there's no stereo system in this car whatsoever and the emergency flashers do actually work if you pull this it lights up the amber lights up front and they are absolutely blinding i'm sure they're not <laughs> they were not blinding in 1966 but with modern leds today they are Trust me, you don't want to look into them. So yeah, this is the 1966 Batmobile. It's surprisingly complex in a lot of ways, and yet at the same time, really simple in a lot of ways. There's, you know, not as much to it as a normal production car, but everything about it is really weird, really unique, um, you know, really kind of special and bespoke. And uh, yeah, I, I mean, I'm just, I'm so excited about this car because it's, it, you know, it, Everyone's seen it on television, everyone knows it, and I can't believe it's here. I can't believe that I'm actually standing next to it and I get to you know, do things with it and enjoy it. And uh, yeah, so if you've enjoyed this content, please you know, come back next week, same bat time, same bat channel. We'll have another car for you, another video. And until then,